This, I think, is the third e-learning Africa debate, and uh, the past two debates have been very lively affairs. And the purpose of the debate is to try to create a more interactive format. And the way that we've decided to do that is by using an old-style, traditional, parliamentary-type debate. And uh, those of you who um, watch C-SPAN in the United States or occasional clips on the news elsewhere will be um, familiar with the House of Commons in, in the United Kingdom, which I was a member of, uh, of for five years, which is a little like a, a bear pit or a, a monkey house on occasion, uh, although it's supposed to be a formal uh, debating chamber. But it does get very noisy, very lively, and uh, people can interrupt speeches and say what they want, more or less, within the order that's established. And that is the kind of atmosphere that, in a very, very polite and courteous way, we want to try to generate during the next uh, hour and a half here today, because we are going to discuss a very controversial subject, the subject of um, OERs. And uh, we're going to discuss a motion which is, I don't know if it's going to come up on the, on the screen anywhere, apparently not, key networking event, but not the motion. Uh, the motion is, this house believes that the OER movement is fundamentally flawed because it is based on the false assumption that education institutions are willing to share resources freely and openly. And uh, that, obviously, is going to stir up a lot of interest and, uh, and passions on either side of it. And I hope that you will feel uh, free to express those. We've got two speakers on either side, two people who are going to propose the motion and two people who are going to oppose the motion, who will speak against it. And I'll call the first speaker to, uh, to propose the motion uh, in a little while. But what I want to just explain to you is that if you um, is that we will be very flexible in this. So if you disagree with something that one of the speakers says, or if you think that something that they say is factually incorrect, or you want to make a point or ask a question, while they're speaking, you can simply put their put your hand up and ask them if they will give way and let you make that point. And if they want to continue to finish the point that they are, that they are making, they can do that but then they may let you uh, make a short point, and Charles and I, who are chairing this, will ensure that it is a short point, uh, and then they continue. The first two speakers have got 15 minutes each, the second two speakers will have 10 minutes, and then we'll throw the discussion open to the, to the floor of the House, and that will be an opportunity for you to make a short speech uh, or to make another form of contribution. And uh, we'll then let each side one speaker on each side, sum up the debate for five minutes, and then we'll take a vote by a show of hands. And I should say that we're not going to hold anybody to any views that they express here. So the views that you hear from either side may well be views that they actually believe in, but on the other hand, they may well not believe in them. Um, so I, I do make that clear at the outset, because they may say things just for the sake of stirring you up and generating a bit of passion and creating an argument that they may not necessarily want to be held to in the context of their academic career or, or whatever. Uh, this, is a, this is a controversial motion. It's also a motion that has many different parts. It might be in normal circumstances that somebody would want to propose an amendment to it because you might think it is fundamentally flawed. Um, you know, is there a false assumption? If so, what is the false assumption? etc., uh, etc. Et there may be all sorts of little nuances to this, but unfortunately, we don't have time to deal with any of those. So it's simply going to be, do you agree with the motion as it stands or not? And um, so on that basis, I think that more or less covers everything. Um, on that basis, I will ask our first speaker, who is Professor Rory McGreal, who's the UNESCO Chair in Open Educational Resources, uh, to speak for the motion. And Rory, you've got 15 minutes. Hello, 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 hello. 
as the Bobby said to the man with the three heads. Um, I have to say right up that I've never been a member of parliament, uh, not now or ever will be, so you can believe what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. The world has turned into a gimme world. Gimme this, gimme that, gimme something else. Daddy, I want this. Mummy, gimme this, gimme that, gimme everything. Everybody wants something for free. Everybody, it's just, uh, it's, it's the gimme generations, everybody. Gimme this, I want that, I can have that. It's entitlement, everybody feels that they are entitled uh, to everything. And uh, the world is not, is not like that. Nothing of worth in this life is free. And my dad used to uh, uh, recite this uh, little poem to me. Oh, the gift of God be good, that man must w work to earn his food. If you don't work for it, it's not worth having. And so we've got to get away, and that's the overall principle I'm looking at, we've got to get away from this entitlement mentality that everybody thinks they should get something for nothing. Um, <clears throat> if you make something too easy, people don't appreciate it. And uh, I can tell a story of uh, um, academics uh, when I worked in, in, the, in the Middle East and uh, uh, people wanted to simplify a textbook. And why should they simplify the textbook? That's ridiculous. You know, as a professor, I worked hard to get where I am. Why should I make it easy for somebody else? They need to know that they have to work hard to get where they are. Some of the fears that our professors have are very real. Um, uh, students, they can take the material and they just work on their own. They won't come to classes. So there you are, you're stuck giving your lecture and nobody there. They're working with your material and your video uh, for free at home. And wh why would anyone put up with that? Um, some of them will even look at your material before you start uh, uh, delivering your course and they'll start learning it before they even get to your classroom. You know, what kind of an attitude is that? Some of them will even use your material for cheating on exams. So there you are, you're giving free material to allow your students to cheat on their exams. They're not coming to the lectures and uh, it's important that we understand that uh, they have to learn it the hard way, the same way that we learned it. Um, I've worked a lifetime to produce these materials, as any professor knows. You're not talking about uh, uh, producing them in six months. You're talking about a lifetimes of work, of knowledge, put into what you do. And somebody wants that for free? Will the right honorable gentleman yield? Pardon? Will the honorable gentleman yield for a question? Well, all right. Should we also have professors refuse to publish books? Because if the students would read those books, they won't have to come to class. Well, and that is terrible, because why, why, do, why do people become professors? The main reason is they like to write on the blackboard. So if you like to write on the blackboard and nobody's coming to see what you write, what's the point of being a professor? You've worked all your life for this. The, uh, for the, from the institutional point of view, um, we can't give out our courses because our courses have proprietary material anyway. Um, most courses are not owned by the individual professor or the university. Some of the material is proprietary. And we don't know, because of academic freedom, we don't know what professors are teaching in their classrooms. Some of it may be pirated material. And if pirated material gets out into the public, it can hold the university to a, a great, great liability. Another aspect is, not all of our professors, most are for sure, but some of them don't really have good quality material. 
and we don't want that to get out. That could ruin the reputation of our university. And even if it is good quality, some people out there might think it's poor quality. So the perception that there's poor quality material out there is, uh, is important for our universities to avoid. We can't have people out there thinking that our university is uh, putting out poor quality material. <clears throat> Another point, again, and I'm going to stress this, that professors have worked very hard to get where they are. Some of us have struggled up from nothing. Um, um, my, my father was a miner. Uh, we, we grew up very, very poor. We had to struggle to get where we are. And we do that, and then here we are, we produce good quality material that a publisher is interested in for a textbook, and we can sell it. And why shouldn't we be allowed to sell that? Why would we uh, give it away to uh, people who are, you know, the gimme, gimme, gimme generation, who want everything? Gimme this, gimme that, daddy. Oh, go to the, go to the ATM machine. The cash comes out of the wall. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, if uh, in, in some universities, um, the university owns the content, and uh, they, uh, uh, when they own the content, good luck to you, because uh, you're not going to get that open material, because have you ever tried to go through the bureaucracy in any university? Um, you'll never get through it. We will, uh, uh, we will uh, beat you down to, to the very end, because you cannot get through a university bureaucracy. And the university, after you get through all the bureaucracy, you get to the end and they'll say, well, we don't know whether we own it or not. Um, do we own it? Is it proprietary? Does the professor have rights to it? Uh, um, there's uh, printed rights, there's digital rights. So there's so many different rights that the university has to just say no because we don't know where we stand legally. Um, I'll finish off with the, a major reason, too, um, why um, uh, many universities, not our university, but many universities uh, 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 won't allow it. Um, it's because of the corruption. Is, uh, you get uh, Professor X, who's got, uh, who, who is responsible, or Administrator X, who's responsible for buying textbooks. Um, when he retires, he wants to get a job with the publishing company. So to get the job with the publishing company, you buy their textbooks. And then you retire, and you get the job with the publishing company, and guess what? You now sell textbooks to the people who you've appointed in power in that institution. So again, that type of corruption is going to make sure uh, if all the other reasons don't count, that alone is one that is going to stop many, many institutions uh, from uh, adopting open education res resources. And so therefore, I give it to you. This motion supporting OERs is fat fatally flawed. Um, universities are never going to accept uh, uh, open education resources. Remember. We, we cannot allow the gimme, gimme, gimme generation to start getting everything for nothing. Thank you very much.